Which do you find more scary, sharks or varnishing? For most artists, varnishing is very scary. Welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to show you the good, bad, and the ugly for varnishing. What could go wrong? Well, let's look a little close. Um, dust and hair stuck in the varnish. Mm, maybe we varnished too soon and now we've got a bloom or a whitening that's happening. Two coats is not better than one coat as far as matte goes. Watch out for streaky brush strokes. Also, you have to watch out that you don't smear a marker or some paint underneath. Notice how matte photographs beautifully, but it also whitens the dark areas. Hey, gloss is great. Oh, what if you apply it too thinly? What if you apply it unevenly? You either get a dry spot, or if you apply it too thick and uneven, you get a wet spot. Gel is not a varnish. It's too tacky. It interferes with the viewing even more than a gloss does. And the worst, trapped bubbles. It can be so discouraging, but let's share some secrets for how to make this much more fun and successful. Whether you paint in oil or acrylic, MSA varnish is the best. Mineral solvent acrylic varnish requires a solvent to thin it, but it will be the most easily removed should you need to remove the varnish later. Amsterdam varnish comes in high gloss, gloss, satin, and matte. It is silica that is added to varnish to give it its matte appearance. That's why mattes and satins look a little milky. It is very important to stir the matting agent throughout the varnish. Evening out the shine is one of the main reasons to varnish, and it's personal whether you like it matte or high gloss. Um, for photographing, matte is always nice, but gloss makes your colors, especially your darks, look richer and provide more depth to your painting. Matte always makes things look a little bit on the milky side, so if darks are important, choose a gloss. If you work in acrylics or don't want solvents in your studio, there are polymer varnishes available. They are water-based. Make sure you read the label. It'll tell you whether you need to thin it or not. Um, this is Holbein varnish. It is ready to use. However, there's uh, another varnish I really enjoy, which is Golden, and it is a concentrated product. So it looks more, a little more expensive on the shelf, but it goes a lot further because you get to dilute it with water. And as always, Test, test, test before you go to your original piece. So here is me doing some testing, and I've got the varnish. Here I am using a soft brush, and you see there are no bubbles in my uh, varnish, even though I've agitated the container and uh, made sure that the matting agents were well dispersed. Now I'm applying it very wet on wet smooth as possible with my nice smooth brush and going back and just catching any wet ridges or brush strokes it's best to catch them now uh, you can't do much when it's dried in there i also will pick up the piece and look at it from different angles of light and then i really see where those wet ridges might be and i can smooth them out with the brush you have a bit of working time but not a long time so you want to be quick and highly observant Unifying the sheen level or the shininess of your painting is one of the main reasons to varnish. We also varnish to protect the painting from slight manual abrasion or from future cleaning of the piece. Some varnishes, like golden MSA varnish, have ultraviolet light protectors built in to help keep your paintings from fading too quickly. Let's look at this example. Here up by the eye was unvarnished. You can see I have hot spots and low spots depending on the paint or the pigment or how much medium I used. Then in the foreground, you can see the glossy side up there by my thumb and the matte side we just did. There's no right or wrong answer. The shine level of a painting is your personal choice. Let's talk brushes. A lot of people recommend natural hair brushes, and I prefer synthetics. Natural hair might be a goat hair, a squirrel hair, a hog bristle, or a badger blender, but I often find natural hair to be a little bit more brittle and might break off into my 
um, artwork, and often they're a little bit too thick or too stiff. Some synthetic brushes also are too stiff. I prefer the soft mottlers from Da Vinci. See how slender they are? They're very good at pushing around paint without trapping a lot of liquid in them, and they're soft. They don't leave much brush strokes. So those are my two favorite, the Forte and the Fit from Da Vinci. Size of brush is also important. At least in Da Vinci, everything is by millimeters. So if you pick up a 60 millimeter brush, it is 60 millimeters wide. So there's the, choose the brush that you like the spring. Um, also the little brushes you can see, this is the biggest brush I've ever used for varnishing. It's like five times the size of a brush and very wide. I used it for varnishing a mural and with careful cleaning, these brushes can be used over and over and over again. Use the size of the brush to match my painting. If I'm varnishing a number of paintings all at once, I would use a bigger brush. This 12 by 16 size, the 60 mil is good. But I'm only doing this one for this video and I want to clean it quickly, so I'm going to choose something smaller. Be sure to carefully inspect your paintings before you varnish them. I was going to use this one, but look at, I noticed a little scratch. I'm going to have to repair that before I varnish it. So this is the lucky one that's going to get varnished. Remember to inspect it for any dust, debris, dirt, pencil marks, thumbprints. Make sure it's clean. Make sure your work surface is free of dust and hair. And ideally, make sure that furnace isn't going to kick on and blow dust all over your varnished surface. Oh, the dilemma of matte versus gloss. Matte, I'd like to use because it's a dry, hoodoo scene. Uh, make sure you're agitating. Here's how slowly I'll get that matting agent to be dispersed. Um, I also sometimes set it upside down. Or gloss. Crystal varnish will show off my rich colors. It'll make my dark darks nice. It'll look like a nice, glossy, finished painting. I'm going to use that. Do not use a paintbrush to stir up your varnish. We're frothing it up and creating too many bubbles. Also, dragging your brush against the edge like this, it's a habit, but look how many bubbles we're making. Here's what it should look like, free of bubbles. The magic matting agent is well dispersed. Here's my nice brush. I'm gonna dip it in just enough to gather some varnish, let it kind of drip off a bit, and then start applying it to my piece. Work meticulously and deliberately. You can feel the varnish glide smoothly when it's wet and it will start to drag a bit when it gets dry. So go back and pick up more varnish and move it around to be as even as possible. If your painting has a lot of texture or pronounced brush strokes, if you work too quickly, brushing back and forth, back and forth, you might also be frothing up more bubbles. So work carefully, but do work in all directions, making sure that you're getting all the peaks and valleys uh, covered with varnish. While it's still wet and fresh, bring it up to the light. Look closely. Make sure you can see that all the brush strokes are even. You haven't missed a bit and there's no bubbles. Now your brush. Wipe it off. This will save you so much time in cleaning out the varnish. The varnish is invisible, so you can't see it. So taking it off with the brush, you can at least get all the wetness out before you try washing it. Let your painting dry overnight before applying a second coat of varnish. Did you find this practical advice useful? Is varnishing less scary or intimidating than it used to be? Well, if you have lots more questions, please leave them in the comments below. As usual, these products and more are available at paintspot.ca. And uh, thanks for watching and happy painting.